And one of the problems with the online safety bill is the introduction of a legal but harmful category for the removal of content. And this will create a situation in which people will be prevented from saying things that are legal but prohibited. And there's a really significant danger that the bill as drafted will lead to censorship of legal speech by online platforms and that it will give the government unacceptable controls over what we can and cannot say online. Now, as a former sex crimes prosecutor, I completely applaud the desire to protect children online, which underlines the online safety bill. But I'm very worried that this category of legal but harmful will, will enable vexatious complainants to exploit that lack of definitional clarity to try and shut down well, lawful speech well, on topics of public concern that are harmful and should be subject to censorship. Uh, the Honourable <coughs> Member is making a most interesting speech. Does she share my concern that the weight between primary and secondary legislation when it comes to the, the bill she refers to is worrying because some of the definitions are so fundamental, such as freedom of speech, that they should be laid before this House rather than nodded through by some instrument or another, whether negative or positive procedure? Uh, I do share that. I don't think it's safe to leave setting out definitions which must have an impact upon free speech to a government minister in secondary legislation, particularly not a government minister in this government. But really what I'm most worried about is the online platforms, because I don't think the online platforms can be trusted to police speech in a way that's properly cognisant of the law. Not just the law on freedom of speech, but also the law on freedom of belief and domestic anti-discrimination law. Now, I'm coming to a close very shortly, but I just want to take Twitter as an example, because this is really important. Twitter's hateful conduct policy does not include the protected characteristic of sex. And so Twitter routinely censors perfectly legitimate contributions to the public debate on women's sex-based rights, while routinely <coughs> ignoring threats of violence and worse, to women participating in the debate. And in October 2019, the Joint Committee on Human Rights published a report on democracy, freedom of expression and freedom of association, in which we noted that Twitter has omitted sex from the list of protected characteristics in its hateful conduct policy. We recommended that they should remedy this, and in May 2019, a Twitter executive promised us she would look into the issue. But nearly three years later, nothing has been done. And this is a very real concern for the online safety bill, because when women have challenged Twitter's unfair and discriminatory moderation policies, Twitter have replied that they do not consider themselves bound by the Equality Act in relation to the services they provide in the United Kingdom. And their argument is that because they're a company established in Ireland as opposed to the UK, they're therefore exempt under paragraph 2 of Schedule 25 to the Equality Act. Now, I'm not sure that that's right, but it's a loophole that could be closed in the online safety bill. And I've already had some informal discussions with ministers about cl closing that loophole. So to conclude, there's no point in saying that we need a Bill of Rights to protect free speech and then handing over the policing of speech to private companies such as Twitter, whose record shows that they can't be trusted. So on free speech, this government needs to put its money where its mouth is.